Brisbane delight overnight as we saw the Azzurri make their fourth European Championship final. Hello and welcome to Twilight Football Nut. My name is Ed Gooden. Alongside me, a young debutant, Willem. How are you, man? I'm good, Ed. Fantastic to be here. Thanks very much for having me on. And yeah, not a bad time to jump on for the first time. European final just days away. Yeah, I mean, look, I don't know what your night looked like or your morning looked like this morning. But for me, it was sitting at work, sleepily, mm. watching the game. Yeah, I've heard you're on the graveyard shifts at your, uh, your other station. Yeah, at the uh, un- undisclosed gig. Uh, what did it look like for you? What did you do? Uh, it wasn't too bad this morning. I've actually, uh, would you believe, I've, I've just timed my run just ever so slightly off. I've run out of Makona Instant Coffee late <laughs> in the tournament. Only three games to go out I've run out. So this morning it was a quick dip down to the Rookie 7-11. Era. I missed the National Anthems, which is never good when Italy are playing. But, Why uh, even bother watching the game after you've missed the National yeah, Anthems? Yeah, especially with the Azzurri up and about. But, yeah. Um, no, got, got the National Anthems in at halftime and, yeah, managed to get the uh, the full 90 and then the, the extra 30 and the penalties in. So, yeah, it was a fantastic morning. Yeah, beauty. Everyone kind of got their money's worth, didn't they? They did. Yeah. Last night, me and Pakur, a producer Pakur this evening, we were at the Oakley Cannons versus South Melbourne game, the mm-hmm. FFA Cup. Didn't go Pakur's way? No, didn't quite. But, you know, she's extremely neutral. She's, you know, she only gets paid to support Oakley. She doesn't actually support <laughs> Oakley. But South Melbourne running out uh, winners on penalties. And then, of course, the Italian game this morning, Ending in a very, very similar similar way. Uh, how much Euros have you watched? I have watched oh yeah, a fair bit. I've been in. Uh, yeah. I've actually been surprised with uh, with how good a rhythm I've been in. Sometimes <laughs> with the Champions League and these things, you, you sort of struggle to get up. At times, I'm I'm not that invested in European football. But yeah. then, yeah, when the international tournaments roll around, I find myself sort of springing up and actually being alert. Mm. Um, the Makona instant certainly helps. But yeah, watched all the all the Dutch pretty much the entire. Group C, I think it was the Dutch were in with Ukraine, yep. North Macedonia, and Austria. Um, watched most of the uh, most of the the knockout matches, a couple of the the two and fives across the weekends. Mm. Get a little bit tough, but no, watched a fair bit of it and uh, yeah, good on thoroughly you. enjoyed it. Preparing yourself? Ah, th- oh, f- very little. This was actually the f- this is the first game I watched. Seriously? Yeah. Okay. Only <laughs> no sort of sort of half allegiances that you like to spring I'm- up at. You know, like for me, I'm. I've got the Dutch background. Only watch the Dutch at major tournaments, and all of a sudden, everybody wants to know my opinion on the rotating midfield and whether the uh, the wing backs are the way to go. There's no, no whether, allegiance for you that you all of a sudden pop up and claim you're an expert on. I am British. Okay. Uh, more specifically, English. I wonder you've popped your head up at this time of tournament. I know. Hello, look at me, the big supporter. No, I. I it, it's just a little bit too early for me. The times are just really, really bad. Two a.m. Literally unwatchable. There's no circumstance where I can warrant that. Fair enough. It's okay. not going to happen. And then 5 a.m., like this morning worked perfectly. I'm feeling comfortable in the new role. I can yep. relax a little bit, have it on, and then you can watch the game. So it worked out well. But I really need to get a little bit more focused on the football if I'm going to be appearing, appearing on air. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you've done, your, you've done your preparation. I have indeed. So the Italians were quite decent. I would say, I saw a tweet the other day that said Spain, Italy won the match, but Spain won our hearts. Right. Did you feel that way? Or I think so. I think Spain won the first half as well. I thought Italy were, were more or less shell shocked and they you know, so much of the chat going forward in this tournament has been that Mancini sort of dropped the Catanaccio and the defensive mindset, but I think mm. they actually really fell back heavily on that and they were under siege for, for vast majorities of the first half. Uh, and for a long time, it looked like it was going to be that sort of old Italian smash and, grash, smash and grab rather one mm. goal game. Um, I thought Spain, through Danny Olmo and Pedri, really, really bossed the How ball. How good was Danny Olmo? Danny Olmo is awesome. He's a player who... Uh, I haven't seen much of before. I don't watch a lot of Bundesliga, admittedly. Mm. Uh, he's with uh, RB, Le- RB Leipzig. Fake club, if you didn't know. Yes, no, I did know yep, that. That's uh, where- so that didn't impress me. I watched him for Spain. I'm like, what a pure, natural, beautiful footballer. Yeah. And I saw his club and I went, oh. Okay. Bit, of a, bit of a fake club. Yeah. We always make sure that we disclose whenever we're talking about RB Leipzig that there is no link to the energy drink brand uh, Red Bull. No. Just wanting Russ to- and Ball Sport. Is yeah, Russ, yeah, Russ and Ball Sport, yes. a fake word that they made up. <laughs> a made up word. Literally a made up word. Mm-hmm. Doesn't exist in German. Be like a Grants. What's a grant? Like agreement, but it's not real. Oh. It's just made up. Well, kind of every word is made up, actually, when you think about it. Someone, somewhere. That's <laughs> it's just Russ and Ball Sport was a more sort of recent made up word. Do you speak Dutch? I don't, unfortunately. Big regret. I know a couple of Dutch words, and one of them is a swear word, so I'm only going to say one word. Okay, go on. And I'll do this to uh, summarize Alvaro Morata's performance until the penalty. Okay. And that was lekker. Lega, like, as in tasty. Yeah, tasty. Yeah, yeah. It was pretty tasty. I'll, that goal, delicioso. I'll go the your penalty, one. no bueno. 
<laughs> I'll go you one better. Lekker is like. Schmacklek. Schmacklek. Delicious. Mm. I'm trying to think of other Dutch words, but I'm promising you now. That's you know, I'm going to turn going. the mic off. All right, for those who didn't hear that, <laughs> it was egregious. Uh, this was the most Alvaro Morata perf- performance I've ever seen, mm. really. Yeah, disappointing, uh, especially after the, um, the, the winner he scored uh, the other day for him to be able to f- come on. I-, I thought he should have started because uh, Ozabal, Ozoyabal, yeah. uh, he looks to me like he plays sort of like a 37-year-old. I can't believe he's 24 and might be coming up against our Oli Roos at the, uh, at, the, yeah. at the Olympics. He was disappointing for me, so I thought that Morata had come on and, uh, and scored the winner the other day and they still couldn't, um, still couldn't trust him to start. It was disappointing. So then when he came mm. on and scored the goal, I thought – this is it. He's Here we finally go. answered all his critics. Yeah. You know, the tide's going to turn. The narrative around Morata is going to change for good. Uh, and then he, he spurned another decent opportunity in extra time. And then, of course, the penalty never looked like it. It was such a bad penalty. It was. I, re- I said this to Nick Dubano at, uh, when, it, when it missed. I was like, that was one of the worst penalties I've seen. No credit to the goalkeeper. <laughs> I don't think it would have even rolled in. It was so piss weak. Wasn't ideal. No, it wasn't and, ideal. Uh, our man Danny Olmo as well. Yeah, he scotted. He shanked his, that he, really. Had, how many assured touches on the ball throughout the game? And then the, the one that counts the most, unfortunately, is the one that will be remembered. Because he, again, plays for a fake club. <laughs> Let's move on to who uh, Italy may potentially be meeting, either England or Denmark in the final. That game is at 5 a.m. tomorrow morning. What are your vibes? I think it's going to be England. I think a yeah. team that, I mean, you know, there's all this sort of extraneous talk around England, but I think at the moment the cold hard facts you've got to look at is the fact that they've scored eight goals and are mm. yet to concede. It's and amazing, isn't it? Solid, And the vast majority of their issues have been sort of wrangling with that sort of outside chat, particularly the game against Germany. Mm. By far the better side, but it was almost the history they were playing against in themselves. Um, so those goals have actually started to flow now. I think the Ukraine game will give them a fair bit of confidence. I think Denmark have been sort of running off fumes a little bit. And yeah, they scored four goals in consecutive games and have been mm. excellent. But I think it'll be, uh, if England can, uh, can get their heads in the game early, I think they're by far the superior team. <laughs> I think that if England were more of a villain and a lot of Australia didn't have this sort of half connection to England as a, as a country, mm-hmm. then I think a lot more people would be tipping Denmark. Okay. But because they're not the, like England aren't the full on villain, you can kind of half support them. People are tipping them. But if it was England, if it was Germany versus Denmark, I reckon most people would be going Denmark going, oh, Denmark are just going to power through. You know, they're going to okay. continue the momentum. Do it for Christian Eriksen. Barrack for the underdog sort of thing. Exactly. But England are already so underdog <laughs> that it's kind of hard to <laughs> barrack for well Denmark. well under the dog. Yeah, they're both... Both of these... I mean, me being half English, I do kind of want them to win. And I also think they'd have the best chance of beating Italy. Mm-hmm. But then again, I'd also feel bad for Nick Dubano, so... Yeah, okay. No, I think if... I think if Denmark win, I think Italy win on Sunday. I think mm. if, if England go through, they'll have gone through. They've sort of got a... A broader squad. Southgate's rotated his squad pretty well as well. There's plenty yeah. of fresh legs. It's not like they've sort of ground to this point. Not to say Denmark have either, but I think there's that many options. Uh, and I think particularly at Wembley as well. Um, let's not, yeah, let's not for discount the Ericsson factor. It's still a factor. It's happened so yeah. long ago. They've done so well to get through three, four, five games. Another game I think will be tough mm. for Denmark, whereas I think England will, uh, if they can manage that expectation, will have a, a far better chance of beating Italy. I think the fact that Harry Kane is really coming into his stride is a massive, obviously a massive plus for England. Raheem Sterling obviously has performed really, really well this tournament. Yep. Someone I'd look to get a little bit more out of is that kind of across the front three of Mason Mount, Jaden Sancho, and then Marcus Rashford. Hasn't been a huge amount, uh, but I might just be asking for too much. Yeah, maybe a little bit quiet from Mason Mount, but let's not forget the weapon that Southgate sort of keeps wrapped in plastic and Julie really needs him is Grealish. Yes. Uh, and it was surprising to see... It wasn't surprising to see him come off the bench and really turn the game against the tiring German defenders. What was surprising was that he wasn't then used at all against uh, Ukraine. Not at all, literally nothing. So that really surprised me. You would have thought a player like that, so dynamic, um, full of confidence as well, you would have thought, Mm. okay, get out there on the park, even if it's a sub the next time. But yeah, maybe we're going to see Grealish start and um, yeah, Southgate really sort of hit the uh, pull trigger case of emergency sort of button. I think it'd be hard not to start him. I'm just imagining Sterling Grealish mount. And it being quite devastating. Still in Grealish Mount, yeah. That'd be quite so, nice. And then Harry Kane up top. And Harry Kane. And it's been good that Southgate's been, and the press as well, have been patient with Harry Kane because 
looking yeah. like he carried some sort of injury in it in, in recent times gone by. I think back to Wayne Rooney at the 2010 World Cup had a couple yeah. of slow ones to start and he was savage really. So it's been uncharacteristic of England to sort of hold their nerve, hold their tongue and, um, and you know, Kane is a class player. So as the tournament rolls on, uh, with a bit of help from Sterling and Grealish, he's come into it. Also, shout out to Jordan Henderson for mm-hmm. scoring a goal. Yeah, that was the one that he needed on his resume, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, such a, a servant for, for Liverpool, for Sunderland prior to that, and for England as well. Um, yeah, a player like that deserved a goal and uh, at Wembley as well. Or with, no, it was in Rome, wasn't it? So, um, yeah. Yeah. Six months ago, it would have been, or maybe 12 months ago, it would have been surprising to think England would go this far in a major tournament without him mm. as a starting primary holding mid, but he's been sort of usurped. You know, he's had his injury and then Mount, and, uh, not Mount, uh, Rice and Calvin Phillips have sort of taken those spots and... Yeah, he just seems sort of that humble team man who's happy to realise this is the circumstance. When I get my chance, I need to have an yeah. impact, and that's what he's done against Ukraine. I think he's totally fine with it as well. He'd yeah, be the most exactly mature right. head yep. in the like in almost in the entire tournament, mm. maybe behind Chiellini and Benucci. Yeah, well, you don't win sort of Champions Leagues and, and Premier Leagues when you're the skipper if you're if you're not a sort of galvanising yeah. figure. Yeah, you know, we almost sold him to Fulham. For Clint Dempsey. We being? Uh, Liverpool, sorry. You didn't tell me which part of England you uh, you half originate from. Uh, from Telford, which is kind of in the Midlands. Okay. Extremely boring. Black country sort of area? It's kind of. Not it's quite. not not that close to Birmingham. It's a little bit further out. But I also lived in Coventry for a little bit Okay, as well. Fair enough. Which is equally terrible. But you are a Liverpool man. Liverpool man, just because when I was a young boy, I was watching the 2005 Champions League final. Okay. And they... Were victorious. They were indeed. Just a quick little shout out to that game. My my very minimal English allegiance goes to Man United for a similar reason. Mm. Except the first one I watched probably was the 08 Champions League against Barca, and they lost. Oh no, no dear. sorry, excuse me. They won the 08 one against Chelsea. Yeah. But they lost the 09 one against Barca, and I thought, well, I've seen them lose. Now I want to see them win. Yeah. My team, and then it just sort of fizzled out from there, and I never really <laughs> felt the love. No, fair. Enough. I feel like that happens to every Manchester United fan. <laughs> Apparently, Josh is a Manchester United fan. Wouldn't know. But I, exactly. Wouldn't even know he's a Melbourne Victory man. Have you met Josh? I have. He's you just have a met passionate NPL advocate from what I can gather. That's what he tells me. He's anyway. just an NPL supporter and a Sivlaki supporter. That's all he supports. All right, let's jump off to a break. On the other side, what do you want to talk about? Not too sure. You tell me. I have no idea. Let's find out. <laughs> Welcome back to Twilight Football. If you are just joining us, we concluded our wonderful Euro conversation where uh, we talked about how much football you've been watching and how little I've been watching. But we both managed to watch the game uh, this morning and we were both equally astounded by how very Alvaro Morata Alvaro Morata was and the fact that Italy are on their way through. Italy are on their way through. I think um, I think it would be deserved. I... I think uh, I like Mancini. I like the way that they've sort of had to... They've had a couple of injuries, but it hasn't gotten them down. They've stuck pretty true to their um, to their new sort of way of playing. But yeah, when they needed it, I like the way that they sort of fell back on that old traditional layer of being able to grind it out. And um, I think I think it'll be... I think for it to be a truly sort of fitting... Um, you know, I said earlier that England have scored the eight goals and having conceded. I think for it to be a nice rounded tournament for Italy, you've, you want to beat the best. You don't want mm. to sort of roll in and, and have had them knocked out early. So I think, yeah, they, if they can beat England, they will have ticked, obviously ticked every box. So there was obviously the Euros going on. Uh, playing second fiddle, of course, to the game that was played last night in the FFA Cup mm-hmm. uh, between Oakley Cannons and South Melbourne. And to join us in this discussion about... The, uh, the Mighty Cannons falling short to Hellas is Oakley Cannons' own Pakua Frimpong. Pakua, welcome to the studio. Uh, it's, it's tough, I'm not going to lie. I'm a bit upset. Yeah. But... Are you upset or are you, you fake upset? No, I'm upset. Mm. I'm upset. Obviously, I don't like to see the team lose. I was actually very invested in the penalty shootouts. Yeah. Even, even though the game was quite dull, that moment really brought out my sports ego. It was a really dull game. Yes, it was. Willem, you weren't there to watch it. I'll, I'll give you a rundown. Uh, South Melbourne were meant to get pumped. Mm-hmm. Seriously. Absolutely. Like, absolutely destroyed. Uh, and they looked okay. And Oakley looked bad. Mm-hmm. There were a couple of chances here or there, nothing coming. Go to extra time. 
nothing happened. I had actually left at that point. Right. And I was in the car listening to the game while driving my mates home who I went with. Mm-hmm. And penalty shootout. Couple of plays missed, couple of plays scored. Did you make the sort of mad U turn to get back for the penalty shootout? Hell no! Far gone by Hell no! I was, it was <laughs> so so cold as it well. It was actually okay. extremely cold. Yeah. Um, the with all the people I was talking to before the game, we were expecting Oakley to you know to win this game. We just come off a six one victory over um, Dandy City on Friday night. Yeah. But like, I kind of had forgotten that we played so many games. Could it just become a blur? Mm. So I'm not making excuses for losing, but I'm going to make an excuse You're for losing. You're just giving reasons. I'm giving justifications. Yeah. If you play six games in 18 days as a semi-professional footballer, I have no issue with you not being your 100% self. And it's not even like they got thrashed in the 90 minutes. Like, it was nil-nil. Like, yeah. was, you know, they still defended reasonably well. Mm. Yeah, cool. So for those at Oakley maybe getting a little bit unnecessarily upset about the game, do you say... Calma. What does that mean? I'm not. I'm not. I'm not down. I'm not bilingual like that, Ed. I'm That's okay. Uh, well, let's talk about what's coming up next in the FFA Cup. So, for those in Victoria, the two teams that are going through to the national stage, I believe it's called the national stage. Yeah, just the last thirty-two. Last thirty-two. When it goes national, we can roll with that. Uh, <laughs> Avondale and South Melbourne. Avondale, of course, they're just killing it this season. Top of the table in the NPL Victoria. Now through to the uh, fin- the big money stage, as we like to call it. Uh, and then South Melbourne, who were doing pretty good in the NPL, lost two games. And because NPL Victoria is just crazy, they're now down to ninth, mm-hmm. which is just ridiculous. And the fairy tale story of the FFA Cup is Mon Bulk Rangers. Really? They're still in? Well, I don't think they've actually played yet. So it's tonight is the final two playoffs. So two games for the final two spots. Was oh, it tonight? Yeah. So Port Melbourne are in Mon, or oh, they're not in, but they're in the last, you know, the last four for the last two spots. So there's Mon yeah. Bulk, there's Port Melbourne. Mm-hmm. There's another couple in there as well. So it's, Mon, so it's Mon, yeah, Mon Bulk versus Hume, and then Port Melbourne versus Moreland. Moreland's Everest. Yeah. The old Uve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the traditional Uve. Yeah. Oh, uh, this is. This is actually going to be a. It's going to be decent, I think. Mm. I think Port Melbourne are like a really annoying team to play. Having watched Oakley play them earlier in the season, they're just quite like they, – if they show up, they can beat anyone, but they mm. just play such frustrating brand of they football. They are frustrating. It's really annoying. To they're, they're my favourite team in the NPL, Port. That says a lot about you, Ed. It does. I mean, they're, they're probably the closest team to – I was m- going to say because it's, it it's the shortest drive. Yeah, probably. <laughs> they're very, very close. I'm in. Um, where do you live, William? Actually, I am in South Yarra at the minute. Oh, mate, you're Bentley, even... Ormond, McKinnon, sort of man. Yeah, those are those are suburbs. Just south of Caulfield. Yeah, lived in them all. It's a nice, nice pocket of the world. Lovely. Where are you? Uh, southeast Berwick. Berwick, it's, yeah. It's not, yeah. Berwick is southeast. It is. I thought I was southeast no, in no, Balaclava. We, Berwick is definitely. That is not southeast. Okay, let's talk about Let's not about even this. south. Ed. Come on. Well, let's talk about because my sister literally asked me before. She's like, I when people ask me where I live, what region, she just says, "Oh, Balaclava." And people are like, "Where is that?" And she you says, just "Say I live near Chapel Street, like two minutes just, away from Chapel Street." Yeah, just south of South Yarra. Yes, south south. South yeah. South Yarra. Yeah. I don't even. That's not south to me at all. I do not it's even. Ba- think it's just. Off. It's just kind of <laughs> literally Bayside. It's the city, literally. So you tell me you're from Balcarb, I'll say you're from the city. I say inner city. Yeah. Inner city lefty. There's no south in there. No north, east, south, west, nothing. Just city. My girlfriend's in Dandenong. What's that? Southeast. I think that's just east. No, it's literally southeast. It's a 15 minute drive on the M1. Just you. Yeah, you just smash it down. Yeah, it's 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 that's the southeast. Come on, I'm telling you, I've lived in Dandenong too. Did southeast. you really? I did. Whereabouts? Uh, Dandenong North. Wait, own. no, she lives in Dandenong. Whereabouts in Dandenong North? Um, Trust me, I know all the street so to names. Me, that's all just Dandenong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the... I live near <laughs> a high school called Lindell. I, I, to be fair, I only lived there for a year after mm. I moved to Australia and then I lived, I've lived. i lived in my house like my whole life basically. Your, your house? My house, yeah. Must I be nice being it. a homeowner. My hey, house. <laughs> I make a lot of money. <laughs> I mean, you work here, of course. Exactly, exactly. Um, I mean, if we want to continue the personal discussions, how are we all doing? <sighs> Fantastic. Yeah? Really. Or well, cruising along? Yeah. Going well. Yeah. Willem, how's yeah. it been been on FNR? How it's been you fantastic. Feeling? Really? A couple of weeks. Yeah. yeah. I like that Enjoyed for you. It so far. It's been awesome having you in. Yeah. Really, it, go, it goes without saying, but I was talking to, um, and we can talk about this on air because it's wholesome. Uh, <laughs> I was talking to Lockie Flanagan oh, yes. the other night, and we were talking about uh, who was coming in this evening, mm. and he immediately, he immediately said, oh, it's Willem. 
you'll be totally fine. We're sweet. He's extremely competent. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. And just good. Well, it's nice to make new friends, yeah. especially around football. Oh, friends. Oh, Oh, football friends. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is nice actually. Um, well, let's. Is there any? Are there any clubs here? Oh, you know who there excites are. me. Actually. There's a couple I'm excited about. Yeah. Uh, who? Who? Who's it for you? Well, there's a couple of first timers. The first one is a powerhouse from the West, <laughs> ECU Jundalup. Jundalup. Is it Jundalup? What is it? I don't know how else I'd pronounce it. Uh, they are the current. They are currently managed by Kenny Lowe. That's astounding. They uh, really. The nickname is the Jacks. Yeah. They've got one of the best logos. It's like a jack on a plane car. It's in King Coin's <laughs> jack. They've produced it's Brandon O'Neill, Adam Taggart, Royce Williams. Adam Taggart's my just about one of my all-time favorite soccer roos. Yeah. That's a little secret I haven't let out of the bag on FNR just yet. Oh, it's out now. But um, Jundalup, they're in. And they have been, um, they've been pretty dirty not to have been involved in the FFA Cup last 32 so far. So they mm. get their chance to uh, finally stake their claim on the national stage. And the other one is little known Edge Hill United. They're from far north Queensland. They're an amateur side, so they're not even, they're wow. they're not even semi-pro. Edge Hill United. And they, uh, they had their, um, to get through to the, the final 32, they had their knockout against a team with another great name, Mackay, with Sundays, oh. United, Powerhouse, all of the it. These name? are all part of the names? It's, it's the, it's, they've got five names in one. It was a, You're a kidding merger. Me. Um, I'll get it up in a minute, but... Yeah, they're from uh, the Whit Sundays, but they're, they're quite a force in uh, Queensland NPL. But Edge Hill took it up to them. Uh, they flew out. Hell yeah! They flew out their coach, their staff, their life members, the people who sort of cook the pies and the what? people who do the canteen. <laughs> they, it was a whole club affair. That's sick. And they took them all up there and they knocked off the Magpies Crusaders. So Edge Hill United, uh, probably outs. one of the smaller clubs to come uh, up on the uh, the national stage as mm. yet. Very excited to see what they can do. You know who's got me and up and about. And this is because I did a uh, interview a couple of hours ago mm. with a former Gold Coast United player. Yes. Uh, well, the club is Gold Coast United. Mm. They are through to the national stage. And there has been a very weak but meaningful conversation regarding a potential Clive Palmer, Clive Palmer comeback if uh, Gold Coast United make it to the FFA Cup final. Okay. Maybe him parachuting in to... Amy Park or wherever it's played. Parachuting. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say a word about parachuting in Nick Clive Palmer. No. So we just, let's move on from that. Keep going, it. Come on. Next. Trudging <laughs> very carefully. Very carefully. I don't think he'll be listening. Uh, no, no, no. I'm okay. I really am. I don't want... I'm Clive would have the power to crush this whole station. <laughs> he would. He would crush it. He would be under. Imagine if Clive bankrolled this want, station. I don't want the dinosaurs at Clive's, like the, like Dinosaur Park or whatever, to come here and attack me. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay away from it. If yeah. Clive... Ran this station, we'd be running for local council in three years' time. We would be. Just like Christian And his, our ads would be yep. everywhere on Facebook as well. Fun fact, Clive Palmer is one of the uh, biggest uh, ad uh, campaign people in uh, Victoria. I learned that in my marketing class. I've got the name of that club up as well, just for the record. Yep. Mackay and Whit Sundays, Magpies, Crusaders, United. That's astoundingly poor form. So that's when everybody goes to the negotiating table. They say, okay, we're going to merge, but we're not giving up our identity. Mm. And do you know then what after you do, much though? debate and discussion, they go... Just throw the whole lot in and see what happens. With stuff like that, surely you just take the first letter of everybody's name and Have you Have a look just at this like... crest. They've got a magpie. They've got a crusader. They've got some soccer balls. They've got some swords that? or some footballs, rather. It's all going on. Okay. And um, it was still not enough to defeat the might of Edge Hill United. Search it up, guys. It's a nice, it's a nice logo. There was a club that merged. If we're talking about this. My former junior club, H, HJSC, mm-hmm. Hampton Junior Soccer Club, recently had a merger with Brighton Soccer Club. And I'm just trying to find... Oh, down at Dendy Park. Yeah, Dendy Park. That's an institution, Brighton at Dendy. It is, No longer. It? No, well, Hampton was... Hampton actually didn't have a... Uh, yeah, they didn't, they didn't have a senior team. So Brighton senior team merged with Hampton. Okay. And so now Hampton has a senior team but also doesn't. Mm-hmm. So now they're called Hampton East Brighton Soccer Club Hampton or Football East Club. Brighton. Yeah. Okay. Which kind of has a decent ring to it, doesn't it? Why don't you just go by Heb? Heb. The Hebbers. The Hebbers. The old Heb. The Heb boys. Do you know what that? Do you know that? Um, hey, the uh, macar- not the macar- the um, that song that's like the macarena. Hey, da da da. Hey, soul sister. Hey, da, da. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> not train. <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> you know the one you're talking about. Yeah, hey, that would. Ha, ha. Yeah, hey, hey, yeah, that that's yeah. the one. I feel like that would be their intro music, as you know, in all the plays and they score. They'd just be their dance. Come on, Heb. If <laughs> if you guys can stall for long enough, I might be able to find it. Heb. Hip, 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 hip. Uh-huh. Who else do we have in the NPL? Who do you go for, Will? In, oh, actually, I do know the answer. You go for victory, don't you? I'm a Melbourne victory man. How do you um, feel 
How do you, how do you emotionally feel after being a victory fan? I feel like. I've been through the ringer, but you're still coming from that point of, you know, we've won so much, you can't really complain <laughs> oh, too hard. Get it's, out not, of no, it's not an arrogance thing. Here <laughs> we go. It's just, it's just that I think in a sporting sense, I have a long memory and I'm able to approach hard times and good times equally yep. with a holistic, okay, if you look at the 15-year history of the club. That doesn't How much... long does that extend out for? If in 30 years you haven't won another thing, do you go, well, look. In you become fo- an Arsenal fan in 45, as Yeah, basically. In 45 <laughs> years we won, how many titles you won? Four? Uh, yeah. Three. Yeah. Yeah, I that's a title that every ten that. years. That's not bad. Yeah, you'll no. take that. No, I'm uh, this season. I would like to see some uh, some improvement. And I think mm. uh, uh, as proven over a long time, John Didalitza and Tony Popovich know what they're doing. I they think, do a little uh, something, something. Victory fans are in a position now where they can't complain about whatever style Popovich rolls out because there is no distinguished style. Uh, there hasn't been a style for a long time. So whatever mm. he wants to play, you just got to go with it. For you, who are the players on the current victory list that you actually would like to keep? Uh, I would like to keep. Barnett, I would have liked to have kept Traore, but he's mm-hmm. gone now. Yep. Uh, a couple of the kids re-signed this week. Nishikawa, uh, sorry, Nishikawa's gone. Villa Pile uh, re-signed. Um, there was a little bit to work with there. I think Matt Acton's still signed as a keeper. I would have liked to have seen him possibly moved on. Oh, Ooh, that's an interesting. Thing. A non-signing. A non-signing. Why a is sacking. That? <laughs> <laughs> the Why would you say that? Uh, because I don't think he's up to the standard of an A-League team that wants to aspire to play finals. So you're saying he should play for the Oakley Hounds? Sure, game? I think he'd probably, no disrespect to Oakley, but he'd probably hey, dominate it. Imagine the biggest team in Victoria, okay? Statement. Imagine him and goal Wilfred Burney up top. Could you imagine? That'd be We'd amazing. Be elite. Let's save our Wilfred Burney conversation for the next segment in the show because we have to ensure that we have four podcasts. <laughs> Welcome back to Twilight Football. Just joining us, last section of the show, we really talked about whatever we wanted, wasn't it? A little, yeah, NPL chat, FFA Cup chat, the whole shebang. Pakura, are you joining us for this segment? Yeah, she's on her way. Uh, what do you want to talk about now, man? Uh, we spoke earlier about a couple of clubs that have merged in, yes. the, um, in the NPL and just around the local scene here in Victoria. Are you aware that as we speak, like tectonic plates shifting <laughs> over time. Leagues, entire leagues emerging. Wow. So there's been talk for a little while that the Bene League will come into existence soon. The mm. Belgian, uh, is it the Jupiler Pro League, I believe it is. And of course, the Dutch Eredivisie. I remember this. So this is, this is very much on the cards. This could still go ahead. So the idea there is that you've got two reasonably strong team sort of middle middle feeders at the big european dinner table and if they were to um if they were to, um, to merge they'd see sort of you know the rising tide lift all ships and you'd see dutch and belgian sides having stronger competition week to week and uh, and going on to bigger and better things in the champions league mm. but there's another one yeah and this would blow the Benelig league right out of the water is that what it's called officially Benelig? league i think it's a working title I hope it is. <laughs> <laughs> Some sponsor will jump onto it surely. Yeah, they'll do that. But uh the the MLS Mm-hmm. The little MLS, yeah, and the Liga MX, the Mexican top. Oh, tier. that so makes sense. There's talk that yeah, this is going to be a huge merger, um, mutually beneficial. Both the, um, I think one of them's got a commissioner, Don Garba. The other one's got a president. Don't quote me on his name. Presidente in Mexico, El Presidente. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're both pretty keen on it. The Mexican uh, sides want to just professionalize their operations a little bit further, and the uh, the US obviously want to tap into the massive. Uh, Latino market that's uh, that follows the Mexican mm. league and Latino football from inside the US. So a little bit like your sort of Euro snobs, if you like, who, who won't follow the A League or the NPL, but they're watching all the Premier League and and the European stuff abroad. Yeah. There's obviously a huge population um, of, of of Mexican football fans in the states. So if you could get them to follow their side, but they're actually playing in the US every second week, and you know, imagine the away days uh, crossing the border down to Mexico. That would be mental. Um, so yeah, this could uh, this could change the face of of league football over the next 10 to 20 years. There's already 27 clubs in the MLS. Yep, so there's 27 in the MLS and there's 18 in the Liga MX. So that makes a nice, tidy, two-tiered system, promotion, relegation. Close system below that. You wouldn't... Yeah, you wouldn't have a a 40. Don't don't quote me on my maths, but a 46-team comp. But yeah, the two tiers would work. Anything to make the MLS more bearable for me. You don't like the MLS? Not a fan. You didn't like Soccer Moses the other day? Come on, bro. You didn't like the Gibson guitar? (laughs) Not at all. When I used to ponder and tour 
illegal streams of uh, football matches. If mm-hmm. there were American commentators, would it, the match be on mute? Yes. Yeah. American commentators for me just, I can't do it. And I, the football is probably really, really good. And I've seen, like I, I tuned in for Zlatan's first game. That was nice. The Zlatan overhead kick, that was nice. Yeah. I just don't want to sit there. The and Wayne watch. Rooney goal. You nice. seen that? That was nice. Yep. I just don't want to sit there and watch a bunch of Americans play football. It's just a bit, of, enough, just a bit of arrogance. I don't like it. You can't argue. It is flying. Atlanta, I think they're maybe three or four or even five seasons in. They're getting sixty to 70,000 <laughs> to their purpose-built because stadium. Because Americans have That's nothing outrageous. else to do. Outrageous. Well, they've got five or six sports to, to choose from if they wish, and they're yeah. seemingly flocking to... Uh, oh. But they you guys did say Soccer Moses, right? Yeah, I did. Walking down yeah. the stairs it's and legendary. playing the riff. No, um, he parted the crowd, Let my people too. goal. Yeah, let my people go. <laughs> I feel like he could have come up with... Let my people... Slay, I think, or shred. Yeah, let, let my, my people, people shred. shred. Yeah, it was phenomenal. But one thing I did think about that. Obviously, we as Australians and any proper football fan around the world looks mm. at that and goes, "That is gross." But mm. what oh, is completely well. devoid in that situation is the cultural cringe that we have in here in Australia. You would not see anyone in the stands watching soccer Moses shred, <laughs> saying, <laughs> "They don't do that in the Premier League." Yeah, they don't do that in England. That's not real. Yeah. So there it's is true. that sense of inherent pride that actually I reckon lifts the MLS, whether we like it or not. They don't care. They it do is s- actually growing based They've on their own fuel. Too, so nice. They do some rogue stuff. They do. It's but the that's, most. That's the states as it's a whole. It's because Americans have no shame, so they will do anything mm. for a good time. And you know what? I I appreciate that level. But I just also don't want to watch Americans play football. No, me neither. I'm not saying I like it, but I, I did look at that soccer Moses and I thought <laughs> if that I, happened in Australia, people's heads would explode. I'm not saying I like it, but I find it interesting. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, how was it not? Did you hear about let what my the, people shred? Let my people bloody shred. Did you hear about what? Because that was at the Columbus Crew game. I believe so. At that same game, they have a setup up in the stands with some vinyl pressing machines. You oh. might have heard about this already. I know. But every goal scorer receives a vinyl pressing of the commentary of their goal. Oh, that's outstanding. Isn't that amazing? That's fantastic. Yeah. That's and the best thing I've heard since the, Bris- oh, the Br- Brisbane Roar yeah. had the, uh, the audio wave on the back of the neck when, uh, when Pardaloo scored the header in the 2011 Granny. Oh. And so on the back, it looked like some strange... Squiggle. They had that on the kit. It was actually on the kit. But this is another mm, level. That's... See, the MLS, they do things their own way. They, they just do. take they the game to I've new levels. I've got to give them some credit. You're vinyl right. press. That's a lot of vinyl, though, when you're thinking about it. Oh, it's a complete waste. How much? <laughs> you play it once and you'd be like, I <laughs> want to score another one next week. a waste of vinyl. Well, Columbus Crew, who arguably have the worst name in the business. <laughs> hey, at least you said it, Ed. At least you said it. Yeah. Um, they, have you guys seen their old logo? No. What is it? Are you, are you serious? You haven't seen it? Nope. Twitter's a scary place, Ed. I don't like Look it up. stuff. They've got, a, they've got a new one now. Columbus who? Crew. Columbus okay. Crew. Columbus Crew. Crew. Yeah, they're still called Columbus Crew. Okay. Um, uh, I don't want to see yeah, so that's <laughs> their old one on the left there. Is that right? If uh, which? What are you looking here? Oh, is it the one with the three men? Is that their first one? Yeah. Interesting. Um, is that meant to be like people who work hard, like blue collar workers? <laughs> <laughs> who knows, <laughs> really? <laughs> but the fact they're just—it's three men. Looks like John Candy. Yeah, in the blue women don't play football. What was that? Women don't play football. According to Columbus, no. Is it going back to Christopher Columbus or something like oh, that? Probably. Oh, that would make sense. That would make sense. I think it might. So it's still much. weird. I agree. He's with already that. a problematic man. Big time. Well, extremely, actually. Yeah. yeah. But I okay. think that might be what it's Who is our guy? Uh, uh, Cook. Cook. Oh, my goodness. I'm wow. He got decapitated, did he not, the other day? Uh, the, the statue. statue. The sa- Honestly, I was like, well, I'm sure he's Nadoc been week. passed away for a while. Oh, yeah, he has. Willem. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's long gone, as is Columbus, but still they live on in football logos. <laughs> yes. Strange world. Could you imagine if that, like, somebody wanted to start a new football team and they were like, we're going to have it as the cook, like the cookman. Yep. <laughs> Could you imagine? Like, cookman. Cookman. I don't know. It's the first thing that came to my head. Could you imagine the uproar that would, like, cause? That'd be quite an interesting. There'd be riots. Oh, absolutely. Be Rightfully. Be like, well, yeah, be like calling them the Melbourne, just the Melbourne men. Yeah. <laughs> the Melbourne work men, no. specifically. With like work and then capital M. So like capital just, M-E-N. Yeah. <laughs> Distinguish it. Yeah. Any other notable mergers that you uh, can recall? Oh, not beyond the Mackay and United with Sunday's Crusaders. Magnus. That's iconic. I remember when North Melbourne almost merged, or didn't merge, but they almost went up to the Gold Coast. Oh, in terms of AFL? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, just uh, last week was the 25th year anniversary of the Fitzroy Lions move up to Brisbane with the Brisbane Bears. Yeah. So that's that's 25 years on now. Um, good 25 years? Yes. Has to be, right? Three be. flags. Certainly a good start to it. Yeah, they Three flags it might win a flag this year. Possibly back on the up. Or definitely back yeah. on the up. They're not going to win a flag. 
I hope not. I, I'd have to watch football to give you actually an opinion. Yeah, same. You know North Melbourne reached their highest ever membership figures? I, you yeah, did I could uh, go on a tangent here about AFL membership and the way they count those as well. Please. If you wish. No, no, well, no. I'm actually interested. I don't know how it works. Well, for example, Richmond have hit 100,000 members uh, the last couple of years, but they've got, you know, there's a big difference between paying your, your 300 or your $250 yeah. for your 13 game membership um. and then paying your $60 for your three game membership and then your $50 for your dog membership as an add on <laughs> and then your little tiger. And that's four memberships. Little tiger. But oh. 10, 10, 15 years ago, we would have considered the, the $250 investment as a member. So teams had 40, 50. Now we're up to 100. That's, that that's not – one does not equal you make, one actually. when you have the three game and the two game and the yeah. home and away. It's not – it's not equitable. That doesn't it's, make it's much a lie. sense. It's, it's a big market. The dog lie. one definitely counts. For sure. 100%. What? What are Sorry, you talking about? I don't have any pets, but are you – Well, clearly not. <laughs> but are you, like, serious? Yeah, How does of course a dog it membership count? If anything, it counts more than a human one. What? Because the dog's – They've got the dog membership packs. The dog's little not – Little woofer. They get the blanket. I honestly they get the don't bowl. I couldn't think of anything more ridiculous ever. The dog's like, not coming to the game. It, that's the problem no, right but there. You don't have to go to the game to be a member. Maybe that's one you could take to Oakley. <laughs> and all of a sudden you've got 30,000 members. And it's actually, <laughs> it it actually just looks like a pound. Like there's <laughs> dogs everywhere. And they can bring them as well. That would be like when the boys walk in, like the dogs just bark. Like, you know how Richmond had the drums, you know? Mm. The dogs just bark and the Oakley plays, you know? We play um, The Business by Tiesto now. Maybe it'd just be dogs. And, and you know what else would be good? No um, clean up after the Euros. Just set the dogs in. Yeah. <laughs> you know what Oakley <laughs> needs to earn their membership. Oakley Honestly. needs more bins. Do we? I had to put my can on a on one of the we do have shelves. Them. Maybe enough bins, but uh, I was intimidated. Accessible bins? Is that what you're trying to tell? Yeah, accessible. I was intimidated by all the men standing around them. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to go. Sorry, boys. Just going to put my can of Fanta in the bin here. <laughs> Why did you get a beard? Because I was driving <laughs> like a coward. What's your, what's your drivable can of choice? Oh, I actually don't drink a lot of soft drink, but I treated myself to a Fanta last night. Um, da, 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 da. I don't actually drink soft drink anymore. Yeah. I'm on a water. I have like 10 bottles of water in my car at this very moment in time. Do they in plastic? I don't want to talk about that. I had that and my girlfriend shamed me for it. Your girlfriend seems to have made you a good human being. She has. She really has. She has. Drove you straight to the plastic depot at Cranbourne (laughs) North and said, dispose. (laughs) Dispose of these immediately. No, she just kind of left them there. And she would would always say whenever she gets in the car, like, oh, I'm really thirsty. I'm like, oh, we got water in the car. She's like, I'm not that thirsty. thirsty. (laughs) I would sacrifice my morals to thirsty. Yeah. Well, it's all, I think it's also the fact that the, there's an ingredient in the plastic that can melt into the water and cause some health issues. Definitely. That's almost even worse than floating above the water. Yes, it is. Because it's like the silent killer. No, as in it melts into the water that you're drinking. Oh, and le- it leaches into the water and goes yeah, into yeah. your body, into not your the ocean. It doesn't degrade in the ocean. Our stupid bodies, not the, <laughs> not the pristine ocean that we must be taken care of. No, that's terrible. No, plastic. Plastic's no good at all. I would say my... I do reuse them. Reduce, reuse, recycle. I recycle them as well. So I just want, but then it I just starts want to, to leach okay. into your body. That's no, I just want that to be known. Like, I don't just like litter. I like put them in the right bin at least. I, I'm yeah. a separating plastics kind of person again. Good on you. Yeah. I just want that to be known. I'm not a bad person. Soft plastics. Is it the scrunch? The To find out if it's recyclable. <laughs> scrunch? <laughs> How have we got here? What about just... the 7-Eleven coffee cup? You're not meant to recycle that because that's got the inner lining yes, of plastic. That, that is sneaky. Those... You know that's being banned in WA. Has really? It... Mm. They're only drinking... Emu export anyway, so I wouldn't know what a 7-Eleven coffee is. 7-Eleven, what the... I actually had a 7-Eleven coffee the other day. Mm -hmm. I think if you're ranking the um, horrible coffees... I think it's up there. I'm a bit of a snob when Mm -hmm. it comes to coffee. So there's... Let's let's put them out there. There's Coles, 7-Eleven coffee... Macca's coffee. Macca's coffee, foodery. That's bottom. I was going to say foodery is appalling. (laughs) Fair? Is that a city, like, like... Institution because I, I don't think, know what foodery is. I think foodery are tied in with Caltex. Okay. Yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah, I've, so yeah, I don't, that's why I don't they're know at my local is. Caltex. I go to Shell. I know the one in Balaclava. Do you? I do, yeah. My girlfriend lives in Balaclava. Oh, and lovely. I've been to that foodery early in the morning and had their coffee and it's just yeah. ruined my day. It's bad. Mine's in the one I go to is on the corner of Glen Huntley Road and Nepean Highway. Okay, I can't know, know that one as well. Yeah, where I the Mac is. I was talking to the one on Inkerman and, uh, and Chapel. I go to that. These the one on Inkerman. Do they have petrol? Uh, you have to turn off. Gas, so I wouldn't know. Ooh, Do, sorry. Interesting. Yeah. It's not bad. Half price. You drive what, a Holden Commodore? Yes. 
That Wait, so sense. it's half price, but do you... He's stalking me in the car park. I've <laughs> <laughs> been yeah. here a week and a half. Honestly. Come here, Willem. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so is it, it's half as expensive, but do you run out twice as quickly? Uh, maybe two-thirds as quickly. That's a good deal, mm. though, I reckon. It's a cracking deal. Yeah. The car's on its last legs, but I just can't afford to. What year is it? O two. 2 but it's done 460,000. You are Whoa. kidding me. 460,000. That could, could any, day, any day now on the freeway, that car is not Kaput. there anymore. It turns off sometimes. Oh, no. That's it's exciting. Just, I, I have to put the blinkers on F1, pull into the pits, <laughs> try, starting, try again. <laughs> box, 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 box. That's it, exactly. The car right. is broken. I feel like Valtteri Bottas every time, just screaming at death. <laughs> <laughs> no, James. When are you going to treat me like Lewis? Like, <laughs> when are you going to treat me like Lewis? You have to stop driving the Holden Commodore. That's right. You and start upgrade. driving a... Kia Cappuccino. Mm, great car. What is its actual name? Kia Picanto. It's the XR, XR model. Pale blue. Mm. Have you seen it, Willem? I have not. No, I don't stalk people in the car park. <laughs> I'm just an automotive yeah. lover. Is this all from the F1 documentary on Netflix? Has this stemmed from that? Or were you an F1 lover before that? I, I wasn't an F1 lover, but I liked cars a lot. Yeah. So story time. Uh, working at the bottle shop, I met this wonderful old man named Warwick. He came in once and we just got talking, what are your interests, whatever. It turns out he collects old cars, to be specific, Peugeots from like the 19... He has one from the 1970s and then he had another one from the 1980s. And so I didn't have a car at this point. So he actually offered to sell it to me after we'd had a few more conversations, got to know each other. And, uh, and now I own a 1985 Peugeot 505 that has caught fire before. Wow. Ooh. Don't worry Sorry. about that. No, no. You Locked can't just say it. Off. Ca- just, Sorry. You look past those things. You yeah. can't say it caught fire and not explain how it caught fire because that, there's so many expert, like reasons yeah. for that. So I was sitting on the highway and uh, I was about to turn right mm-hmm. and I noticed a smell. And I look to my left and I see someone in a really shitty looking car and I'm like, sort out your car, mate. Why does that <laughs> smell so bad? And then I realized as the plumes of smoke began to rise from my bonnet. It was my shit car <laughs> that was, uh, sorry, <laughs> it was my bad car that was uh, catching fire. So I pulled over, uh, opened up the hood and saw flames and immediately ran away super, super quick. Grabbed my stuff from the car and just ran to the other side of the street because my fear was petrol is leaked or oil is leaked or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, call the fire brigade. They come extremely quickly, probably in two to three minutes and... They look under the car and they go, oh, it's all good. Like, what do you mean? This car's still on fire. And they're like, no, no, we, we can see what it is. And I'm like, well, what is it? And it was the rubber casing that surrounded the axle of the front. So That just sounds unsafe, having rubber at the bottom. Like, I don't know how cars work, to be fair, but, like, that just sounds unsafe to me. Well, it's to kind of, ironically, it's a safety feature. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, are you a car guy? I don't know what you said the last three minutes. Okay. I was just wondering what you said to Warwick next time he came in. <laughs> <laughs> I actually called him and I'm like, car caught, car actually caught fire. Did you get the car from Warwick? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Very nice. It's worth like... These worth, are the connections you get in Balaclava. No, this was in Sandringham actually. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah, even more southeast. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, that's not southeast. Pretty southeast. Um, yeah, it's worth like... I mean, back then it was probably worth like seven... 7K? And you sold it to me for 1500 oh, Very generous. Nice Very man. generous. Very generous from Warwick. Shout outs. Uh, all right. Well, I think we m- might have to wrap up, actually. We've... Obviously, it's Willem's, you know, first show. He's yep. done really well. Fuck. Bloody Whoa. killed it, mate. Sorry. Whoa. Sorry. Sorry. Is Not there a swear jar? Sorry. <laughs> There's no swear jar. <laughs> uh, you want to do a sign-off? Or any last nah, pass, any silly. last words? or? Nah, it's been good. Uh, let's hope uh, Denmark put up a good show. I still think England will get through. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm hoping that the uh, boys from ECU Jundalup, the Jacks, get a favourable draw in the FAF, FFA Cup on yep. Thursday night. Other than that. When are they going to change the name? I think very soon it's going to be the Australia Cup. Yeah, that would Apparently. Be I don't know. For sure. Or the Oakley Cannons Cup. That's just what you <laughs> That'd hear. be nice. Name it after the team that didn't make it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That Come would on. be lovely. All right. Well, you, do you want to know how to sign off? Go on. Let's okay. learn on air. All right. <laughs>